It's so great to be back in front of a camera at home, in my desk, at my office. Traveling for two weeks is exhausting. Business travel is exhausting, but traveling for two weeks is just a whole nother level. I mean, that's kind of itchy. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast that tells you how I really feel. <laughs> my neck is itching. Why did I even say that? That's weird. Uh, my name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening, watching the show. I'm so excited, not just to be back in front of a camera, but we have an interview with Jared Longshore from the Founders Ministry talking about a synodoc what, by what standard. Now, this synodoc is fantastic. It's great. It really enlightens and brings light to the issues that are going on in the church and the seriousness of these philosophies that are coming in and why we need to address them. There's a special announcement he gives at the end. You got to stay tuned all the way to the end. And it just it's a wonderful interview. I, re- I just recorded it and now I'm doing the intro and the outro to just kind of sandwich this in. So because we have legal obligations now that we're so big and have sponsors and all that good stuff. The first one is we are part of the Fight Laugh Feast Network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put in HTBT in the memo field. You'll get this sweet 15 ounce mug, tons of great benefits and great video content. You'll be blessed. It's a great Christmas gift. And I believe right now when you subscribe in December, you get this month free. And when I mean believe, that is exactly what happens. You get the you get this month free. So go over there, give it to somebody as a gift, give it to yourself as a gift, and you will be blessed and you'll be helping to support us as we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. I want to give a shout out to Kingsman, Kingsman Grooming Products. I'm so excited about this. One step closer to becoming reformed is having a beard. And if you have a beard, you got to take care of it. And I decided to check these guys out. Kingsman, I got the beard balm. I'm going to hold this up, make sure I'm looking at it right. And I got the beard oil. And oh, it smells so good. My wife opened up the package when it came in the mail. She's like, oh my goodness, I love it. I love the smell. We have the tobacco, tobacco cherry. It is great. It has the hints of cherry and tobacco. It's not overwhelming. It's fantastic. The beard, the beard feels phenomenal. Check it out. Go help support some Christian businesses. Kingsmangrooming.ca. Kingsmangrooming.ca. Check them out. Give them some love. If you have any questions, comments, you want to reach out to me, maybe there's an interview you want us to do after seeing this one. Like, oh, that was a great interview. We should interview somebody else. Reach out to me, Matt at howtobuildatent.com or the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Go over, check out Founders Men, watch the Synodoc, support them, pray for them, especially Tom as he's recovering. Let's get into the interview. Jared Longshore, welcome to How to Build a Tent. Thank hey, you for coming on such a short notice. Literally, probably like 20 minutes ago, I asked you to come on the show. That's how easy it is to get me. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always nice to have the connections of uh, David. Uh, yeah. But thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to just read, since this was such short notice, your Foundersman profile. Is that a good overview of I who think you are? So. I think so. Take a stab at it. Let's see. All right. Let's see how my reading skills are. Jared serves as a board member and a vice president of Founders Ministry. He currently serves as the associate pastor at Grace Baptist Church in Cape Coral, Florida, having served in pastoral ministry since 2007. He's earned his MDiv and PhD degrees from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. He and his wife, Heather, have six children. He's a member of the Evangelical Theological Society, and he's like six foot eight. <laughs> Did I get that I'm right? Not qu- I'm not quite six foot eight. Um, Six six foot two. Six foot. And, uh, no, you're not. You're taller than I am, and I'm six two. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I, I thought I was six two. It's um, funny when you see people like just on the internet, YouTube, or whatever, you don't assume that they're ginormous and bigger than right. you. And so when I met you guys, I've met you both once, you and Tom, it's like you guys are both huge, towering giants. I know. He's a, yeah. he's big too. He is big. He is. My wife is pregnant with a seventh kid, though. That's an update. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, we're pumped about that. Yeah, my wife's pregnant too. We're having a girl. I'm scared to oh, death. Congratulations. We're having a girl too. What's your what do you know name? Uh we do, but we're not officially releasing it yet because we don't want to hear anybody's judgment. So uh-huh. if we tell them after we've already named our child, then they they're, you know, too self-conscious to say something about their opinions. Okay. <laughs> so how is Tom doing? I know he had an incident while preaching, was it? Uh, so he wasn't preaching. Uh, he okay. was finishing up 
he was finishing up a uh, kind of a Sunday morning Bible study time before uh, our service began. And so it was right before the service in that middle time, but he was actually in prayer. The whole congregation was in prayer when he fell. So, yeah, what an event. I mean, it was it was obviously scary, and yet mm-hmm. God was gracious and has done really wonderful, wonderful things over the last, I guess, four days. So, Man, yeah, four days. It feels like it's been longer, just the anticipation of trying to figure out what's going on and just hearing the updates and praying for him. Um, and he's out of the hospital, correct? Yeah, he got out of the hospital yesterday. Mm-hmm. So um, he's got home, kind of had his first night in his bed. So that was good. And and uh, he's making progress every day. So good, good. So one of the other things we need to update in your biography is now you are a Synodoc superstar. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. As we're recording this, uh, by what standard was just released and getting tons of great reviews. I'm waiting for all the criticisms that are coming because you know they are because they're hitting on something that is so controversial. And Mm -hmm. um, well, you're just being biblical. And whenever you're biblical, for some reason, it seems like controversy um, flourishes. And before we get into the actual doc, I need to know, how did you get David to actually work on this project? Because I've asked him to do projects with me for a long time and he keeps blowing me off, but somehow you got him. So what's the secret? (laughs) I think it was Tom. You know, Tom was so uh, so good to him when he was down here. Uh, he came down to one of our conferences and, you know, Tom uh, Knox said Tom put a refrigerator in his bedroom. I think it's actually the bedroom I'm in. I'm at Tom's house right now. And I think I'm in the room that Knox stayed in. And then there's a refrigerator here with all kinds of good goodies in it. So Tom softened him up so that, you know, a few months later, whenever we decided to make the film, I think he had to say yes. Got it. Okay. So I need to send him a refrigerator full of food. Yeah, that's right. You can get anything, man. Just send him him some of those uh, energy drinks he drinks. Yeah. Uh, Before we started recording, Jared threatened me. If I uh, treat him poorly on this interview, he's going to go get Tom in the other room and let me have it. So that is a possibility to happen. (laughs) He's still ready. He says, he says, what is it? I'm not as, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm good as once as I ever was. (laughs) That's what they say. That's great. So by what standard? Can you kind of talk about what it's about and what was your objective? What was your goal in making this synodoc? Yeah, when we, you know, it started by watching the film uh, Battle for the Minds. So if you haven't seen that, it's on YouTube. It's, like a, it's an old film that was made when the Southern Baptists were kind of battling liberalism and uh, right kind of when Al Mohler was going to Southern Seminary. And a lot of it was about women in ministry. And, uh, one night, I think it was Knox was sending me all this these links and saying, or watch this YouTube, watch this this old film. My wife and I are watching it. Tom starts watching it. We're all like, this is crazy. We're dealing with the same stuff right now. And as we watch that, um, I finally sold my wife out. It was my wife. You know, for a while, we're thinking, I'm not letting anybody know that my wife was the one who said, this, let's do this. <laughs> and you're just but throwing her under the bus right now. <laughs> that's right. We've already done it once publicly. We got to the point where my wife was like, you guys should make a film. You, you, should, you should have Knox go to the SBC and kind of talk about this. Because there had been talk about women preaching in Southern Baptist life. And that's a big thing. We haven't really been there in Southern mm-hmm. Baptist life in the, the past many years. So we went with that in mind. And um, again, as we went to the convention and as even as the days kind of developed, we started to see that um, there's an ideology that's underneath uh, the issue of women preaching. You know, there's that begins to shape the way that you think about the world, way that you think about uh, equality, right? The way that you think about justice. And we began to see it's not only an issue of women uh, preaching, women in leadership in the church. But it's uh, it's also related to other kind of things, other principles. And so we began to see that manifest itself even at the convention with the um, resolution nine on critical race theory and intersectionality. So then it then it began to develop and take shape and uh, it came to be what it be what it is. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. It's that there are these theories being that are being put out there. And you think it's just about women preaching, but there's all these underlying understandings and beliefs that are baked into that to get them to where they are that affects all these other things. I was sharing a John MacArthur clip from Twitter a while back. It was just amazing how poorly Christians 
understood the Bible, knew how to read the Bible to frame these arguments that they were supporting. And it's like there's such a root cause issue with, you know, women preachers and all these other things that people are trying to disagree with with the Bible. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the one of the problems we're having. One of the reasons it's so controversial is I think a lot of people are still looking at it uh, at each issue as if as if it's only one issue. And Vody mentions this in the film on the issue of race, where he says, you know, he's talking to people that want true, that really have a genuine desire for racial reconciliation, and yet they're getting hijacked by this by this uh, movement, you know, mm-hmm. by by intersectionality and Vody saying, well, you might be doing that, but um, you, these issues are all inextricably connected. And so I think people, when you bring up the various issues, whether it be women preaching, uh, the issue of manhood and womanhood, the issue of race, um, the issue of abuse now, the issue of how to deal with those who are LGBTQ or those who have um, kind of uh, same-sex lust, mm-hmm. uh, that people are looking at them as individual issues rather than noticing, okay, there's a whole worldview underneath all of these issues that's giving rise to the way that we're thinking about these, these um, realities. So I think that that's the, one of the goals. I might be getting ahead of you here, but that's the goal of what we did was to demonstrate how these things are connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you guys did such a great job of that. And I, that's why I love the title so much, By What Standard, because the thing that is stringing these together and not making them isolated issues is it seems that it all boils down to what is your standard and did God really say this? And it you can it's like the same argument just with different words for all of these different issues that you mentioned. I know. It's creepy. What you know who you know who said that? Did God really say? Yeah, I know. I th- and I I always ask people like, do you realize what you're doing and like how that relates to Genesis three and what Satan was actually like Satan was saying, did God really say this? You're, you're making the same arguments about this. Like, doesn't yeah. that give you pause? Doesn't that give you some hesitation? But I'm glad because I think in our society, we're, we're coming to the old uh, no neutrality. We're seeing, we're seeing the myth of neutrality and we've kind of been living there, at least in the circles I've been in for some time. Mm-hmm. And so the, by what standard question is being asked because the other side of this thing, the side that is not Christian, is starting to, in, in legal statute, they're starting to enforce their, their ideology and ethics. I mean, that's what social justice is. Mm-hmm. And so when you start, to, when that's starting to happen, when they're starting to say it is, it, it, at the end of the day, a person that's on the other side of these issues, when they hear that um, we will, we think it's wrong and would not permit a woman to be a pastor in our church, they can't be neutral on that. It's like they have to say that's unjust. Yeah. And that, so then the question is so fitting uh, now because of the way things are shaped, shaping up in our society. It is, well, by what standard is it not just? By God's standard uh, or by some kind of um, secular humanistic standard? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think you're right. And that's something uh, our Presby friends over there in Moscow have really helped me understand about the need to not be neutral and to take a stand because you're right. There is no neutrality and we are in a time where people are starting to have to pick a side and that's kind of scary, but it's also exciting in a way because it seems like that is what needs to happen for us to kind of cleanse the church or not us cleanse the church, but you know, kind of for God to make that distinction and separation for him to hopefully move and to maybe bring another reformation. I don't know how you reform people say it. A revival reformation, something. We're reformed and always reforming. So that's good. There you go. Yeah, and we do, I think we do need the clarity. Uh, We need the clarity Mm -hmm. right now. The the danger, one of the reasons it's been so controversial. The interview will continue in a second, but first we have to tell you about our sponsor, Skillshare. Get out of the rut. Start building skills. Do it on your own time. Skillshare is an online learning community for the creator and all of us. They have thousands of classes, graphic design, photography, creative writing, animation, entrepreneurship, film, video, all things that can help build and create value in yourself that you can start a side hustle, you can start your own company, you can be promoted, you can make a career change. This is a great alternative to the high cost of education. Go check them out. They have thousands and thousands of courses. 
Their classes are on demand so you can learn at your own pace. Get inspired, join a class, create something you love. There's nothing better in life than to be creating things that you love. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare and get two months free when you sign up at Skillshare.com slash HTBT, Skillshare.com slash HTBT. Two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Get started today by heading to Skillshare.com slash HTBT. Now back to the interview. The danger, one of the reasons it's been so controversial is if you, so say you get a little bit of this stuff going. I mean, you know, what we realize, what I've realized through this film is we've all been, we've all got some uh, of this secular humanism or go all the way back to say Marxist ideology, any kind of worldview that says that there is no God or the God who is, is not transcendent. He's not outside. Uh, you know, he's, he is one with the, the creation that he made. Mm-hmm. That kind of thinking infects the way you think about manhood, womanhood, affects the way you think about family, affects the way you think about parenting, affects the way you think about uh, uh, society, um, the, civil, the civil magistrate. It just affects everything. And mm-hmm. so um, drawing a clear line there and helping people to see those connections um, we need to say, okay, there's a lot of good Christians that um, that I, I've used this phrase with Tom in one of our podcasts. I said, I think you can be woke-ish. And uh, <laughs> I think he responded as, I, I think, I don't know, we had to have to discuss it because he says, is that like being a little pregnant? You know, so we're going to see if that's, <laughs> we're going to see if that's really true. But I, I you know, you drift, you drift. And uh, I go back to Josh Harris, you know, I mean, it, yeah. Josh Harris dr- drifted. And so what I, One of the reasons I was willing to move forward with this film is because I genuinely love the brothers and sisters in Christ. I love them. And I don't want to see, I don't want to see people go down this, this road. Yeah. And it's, it's sad that even Christians think that you're being unloving or any of us are being unloving when we are calling out issues, when we are calling people to repentance, if it's sin issues, but it's because we love them that we want to do this. It's like faithful are the wounds of a friend. But it was the, the second part is like fatal are the kisses of an enemy, something to that effect. Right, right. Like we love you guys. And that's why we're willing to take the flack for what we're doing or what you guys are doing. Um, So is this your first synodoc that you've ever done or been a part yeah. of? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Can you kind of talk about like what goes into it? Like the cost, the time, how long did it take you guys to do this? And just kind of some of that behind the scenes business part. Yeah, well. You know, we started it just just before the SBC, and so I can't even remember when that was. Maybe it was June, so okay. six months. Um, yeah, and I didn't know anything, so we just kind of just said, took Knox, the lead. What, yeah, what are we supposed to do, Knox? And uh, <laughs> but sitting with sitting with people and doing these interviews and talking about the issues, and it just this one was interesting. It all shaped up. There was already a debate between Tom. Askell and Dwight McKissick at the SBC about um, about the issue of um, women preaching. And so that was something that was going to play a part in this whole thing. Um, at least at the SBC, the story took shape as all of the panels are about these issues. So it's not like we're creating this 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 thing. I mean, people are asking the question about women and how they are how they are helpers in the mission of God. And we're asking these questions about race. We're asking these questions about abuse. So, you know, in, in many ways, the, the film just kind of portrayed what's really going on there in the conversations we're having. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of trips, a lot of flights, you know, Knox took a lot of flights around to different locations. Tom took a lot of flights around to different locations to mm-hmm. meet with people and to do the interviews and to put the pieces together. So, um, yeah, there is a lot. It certainly is a lot of work. It's an interest, it was. It's been an interesting journey. Yeah, I'd say I was even thinking back as you were talking about this journey of the, even from the very first teaser that was released, there was tons of controversy of how it was laid out and things that weren't, well, I guess a lot of, some of it was about the actual, you know, discussion or about the topic of what you guys are doing. But then there was some about, oh, the frames, you were framing people in the wrong way and just the layout and the, you know, the clip didn't give context and like, it is a clip. So how do you handle the kind of the pressure, the criticism, um, the pre- I heard you guys had pressure to not even release the doc. Like, how did you process that? How did you deal with that? Yeah, man. Well, that was just a, I mean, the, I could go on forever about that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating. You get, you, you get, we're getting used to it and saying, mm-hmm. okay, um, 
you're going to, we're going to say things and people are going to misconstrue what we say. And, um, you know, we need to try to be as clear as we can, but there's going to be a lot of noise that we're not able to, um, to answer. There's going to be some things that just, we're not going to know what some people will not be satisfied. And yet we want to be as clear as we can, um, in dealing with it. And it was, it was so fascinating because there was a ton of pressure. I mean, you know, people's, you know, I remember John Piper's emotional blackmail, like we're all teed up on that. I mean, we're pastors. We know a lot about how these things operate. And so we guarded up against that. But this was uh, certainly with the release of, of the trailer and then with the film now, there's whole new levels of that kind of thing. And um, it was some serious, there was some serious uh, turmoil that was going on. So I just remembered scripture. I mean, what's the Bible say? Remove the log out of your own eye before you try to help your brother with a speck and search me, O God, and know my heart and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Mm -hmm. and help me to confess in and repent of it. I've got a gospel. I've got a crucified and risen Savior. And so anything that is true, if any of my shortcomings is covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, there's no reason for me to hide it, fake it. If I've done something wrong, admit it. If I haven't done anything wrong, don't apologize. The Bible shows me what I'm supposed to do. God has a law. I should examine my heart by His standard. Um, remember that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Just you go through all the Bible verses and sit and talk and have good brothers tell you, you know, um, what's going on here. So I think the, the controversy, we certainly did think that, okay, we're hitting the mark. Like if this is going on, we're hitting the mark because yeah. we don't do everything right. One of the problems, the law gospel is so important. We just did a conference on this at Founders. We've got all our stuff posted up at founders.org. You can find that through our YouTube channel. Law gospel is huge when it comes to the controversy, when it comes to the the charges, you know, of whatever you've done wrong. Because you got to look to the to the law and to look to God's word and say, well, examine me according to it. What have I done? And, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot, especially in pastoral ministry, is moral equivalency. So you can sit down with like two sisters and one sister just slandered the mess out of the other one all over the internet. And the other sister didn't have her sister who's upset with her in her house as many times as the other sister would have liked. <laughs> okay. And so like a bad thing to do is to sit down and be like, well, look, we all have sin, you know, 50, 50 here, blood of Christ covers it. Say, you're sorry. Say, you're sorry. They're okay. All's forgiven. Let's get going. Uh -huh. You're like, no, 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 no. That, you, you, that nothing, no, church is going to survive no organization is going to survive if you're doing that kind of thing and right. so you've got to be able to weigh okay is this a significant sin now every sin will put you in hell but that doesn't mean every sin is equally grievous or equally destructive and so when all the noise like when you look at what you you've done and you go okay this is a lot of noise like you know mm -hmm. it helps you to examine what you've done according to the word and then think if we're that screwed up on the law, like if people think that if they're really screwing up, what's a significant grievous sin and what's not, it kind of reminds you, yeah, we really do need to ask by what standard. Yeah. I love that because I mean, I love the answer you gave. It's not that they're screwed up, but because by what standard is a synodoc kind of calling out or taking issue with things but your answer on how do you deal with the blowback and pressure was also by the standard that you have in the positive way. It allowed you to stand firm and allowed you to be confident and to be able to take these blows because you do have a standard to hold to. You're not holding to yourself. You're not holding to anything that you've done, but by what God has said and what God is calling you to do. I love that. Amen. That is great. Amen. Um, so that, I think that's just the perfect place to end. So where can we find the Synodoc? It's on the Founders website. You go to founders.org. As of today, there's a featured article which will take you to the Founders Synodoc page. Also at the top, you'll see a top of the founders.org website, you'll see Founders Synodoc. And after you watch it, uh, one, one of the things we, we thought is what do we want to do next? You know, when you get done with this film, everybody's like, I want to do something. And mm -hmm. we also know it's a time where people are going to try to hijack it. So it's like, ah, people are, okay something's going on here. Let's, let's try to say, Hey, you need to do this, but whatever this is, wouldn't be the right thing. And so we said, we need to make another film or another docu series is what we're going to call it called wield the sword. Ooh. And so you can see that if you go to the founder synodoc page, when you watch it, the question is, okay, we see 
and, and by what standard shows that there's a worldly ideology and it has been encroaching in ways upon Christian life and teaching. Mm-hmm. And so what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to actually take the word of God and apply it to life. We're to do the word. You know, we've talked for a long time about, well, we believe in inerrancy. We believe in biblical authority. We believe that the scripture is sufficient. But it's kind of like it's a sword up there on the mantle encased in glass. It's like well lit, plenty sharp. And then you say, but we need to take and actually use it in the world. We Amen. need to do do with the word of God what we're supposed to do in areas of, of sexuality, manhood, womanhood, family, education, culture, economics, history, those kinds of things. And so we're going to make a docu-series. You can go right to that. We've already got our support page up. Be praying for us as we're going to try to say, okay, now that we see these things, here's what we need to do about it. All right, great. So I'm going to expect you to beat the record on your last synodoc and do it in less than six months because I'm really excited about it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're shooting for like 15 uh, episodes of this, trying to plow down into it with people that are really sharp on it. So it might take longer. Who knows? We're going to try to get on it. That's great. So we can support you, donate to... Uh, the next documentary at Founders Ministry as well. Absolutely, yeah, we we, we rejoice with that. Thank you for those who do. That's great. And if people want to get a hold of you, Twitter is that the best best way? Yeah, we're on Twitter. We have a founders dot org uh, website that's full of content, articles, and journal, and a study center for theological education. We have our Twitter handles. You can check us out there. We're on Facebook. We have a YouTube with all kinds of content as well. Mm-hmm. Founders Ministries, and you'll find us. Great. I will put all that in the show notes as well. Jared, thank you so much for uh, taking the time at such a short notice. Please tell Tom we're all praying for him. I will. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Jared, for joining last minute. Like we said, I really appreciate it. I'm thankful for you and Tom, the founders men, fighting the good fight for putting out this doc. I'm excited to see the next series coming out. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Pray for them. Support them, guys. Check out their links in the show notes. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.